Okay, I've got a little game, and I want you all to play along with me. And I really want you to do it as well, because it'll genuinely make this review a lot easier for me. I want you to hold your left hand in the air in a closed fist, and think of a number between 1 and 5. I'm then going to display six different images on the screen. You won't know what these images are going to be, but they are going to be different, so you'll know when they switch out. When you see a picture that feels right to you, and that's completely instinctual, with your left hand, the one that you're holding aloft in a fist shape, I want you to display on your fingers the number you were thinking of. Don't do it too early, and don't do it too late. You can't change your mind, and you have to do it as soon as an image appears on the screen. Got it? Okay, here we go. Did you do it? Did you get it right? Did you know what number to hold up? Did you know what picture you had to select? No. And I'm not going to tell you. Do you feel stupid now? Do you feel like that was a complete waste of time? Well, congratulations. You've just played Dragon's Lair on the ZX Spectrum. Am I being unfair? No. Dragon's Lair is the game that stands out without question in my mind as the most harrowing experience the ZX Spectrum ever threw at me. And I never made it past level one. I never made it past level one because it's equal parts frustratingly difficult and wildly insipid. I decided to look back at the game because the memories of being stuck on that first level have never really left me and I often wondered if it was because I was just a stupid kid who didn't know what to do. No. This wasn't on me at all. Dragon's Lair is an absolute mess. And as some of you will rightly point out, I agree, the source material isn't exactly a shining beacon of gameplay. But this is just so, so wrong on every level. At this point, you'll likely have been watching me fail over and over again, and if you don't have any experience with Dragon's Lair, it's really difficult to properly instill within the viewer just how much of an arse ache it is to control. This is stage one, and funnily enough, it's one of the only stages where you do actually get full control of much of anything. You need to jump onto this disc thing. That's challenge one. Good luck there. Then you have to try to work out where the middle of said disc thing is, which isn't particularly easy from the chosen perspective you've been given. Then you've got to descend to the bottom while dealing with a wind genie. This wind genie will appear randomly in either the top left, top right, bottom left or bottom right. You have to push against him in order to stop from falling off. Which on paper sounds like a piece of piss, simply move in the opposite direction. But you have to be close to psychic or instantaneous in order to counteract this wind genie on time. Regardless of how quickly you run in the opposite direction, the wind still has enough force to push you back a step or two, which means fighting against him too late will just result in you falling off regardless. And I still can't do it. If it wasn't for save states, this review would end here because I still can't get anywhere close to beating this absolutely ridiculously designed pile of shit. But as a kid, I kept coming back to this. That's what you did as a kid. It didn't matter whether the game was bad, okay, or amazing. You kept coming back because it was usually all you had. Imagine, imagine how disappointed I would have been if I'd actually made it to the second level where things get even worse. Remember that game I made you play at the start of the review? Well, this is that in video game form. Things happen on screen, then you press up, down, left, right, or fire. The game doesn't tell you which. And you press it at exactly the right time. Again, the game doesn't tell you what the exact right time is. This is not a game. You remember Simon, right? The little round thing with four lights on? Remember how it would give you a pattern to remember and you'd have to play it back? That wasn't the most fun game in the world, but it had structure. It had a purpose. It gradually increased its difficulty by giving you a longer pattern to remember. It was simplicity, but it had form. Dragon's Lair is simple, but it has no form at all. It's asking you to guess every step of the way, and don't think that the instructions are going to give you any hints here either. Here's what it says about this second level. Time your moves and sword swings carefully. Don't react too soon or too late. Battle some of these gruesome foes with your trusty sword and avoid others with an agile dodge. Bollocks. This gives me nothing, and the game just continues in this fashion. There's a rope swinging section that requires timing I still don't understand, even now. You press jump, and then half a second later your man might do something, or he'll do nothing. Sometimes you have to press jump when you didn't expect to. 
All you do on this screen is press jump, and it's still almost impossible to fathom. So you know what? I don't even want to talk about this game anymore. I'm just going to tell you a story instead. Last year, my mother-in-law came to visit, and my wife had bought a mixture of sweets to eat while I watched a film for the night. She poured them all into a big mixing bowl for them to share, and when they'd had enough, she put the bowl to one side. I wasn't watching the film, I was in another room playing something on the PC probably, sat in my dark hovel with the glow of the monitor screen. She shouted through to me, do you want any of these sweets? And because I'm a man who can't say no to a sugar high, as I sure go through, grab the bowl and come back through. I pick a sweet out of the bowl, a chewy cherry sweet, and it absolutely explodes with flavour in my mouth. Oh my god, I shouted through. These cherry sweets are delicious, where did you get them? I struggled to see in the dim light, but I could make out a couple more by the edges, so I ate those just to satisfy my taste buds. Once I was done, I took the bowl through to the kitchen, I switched the light on, and I looked down at the bowl and froze. What was this? What was this in the sweet bowl? What the hell was I looking at? I walked back through into the front room, I switched the light on, silently I pointed at the sweet bowl. Please tell me what this is, I said, the taste of cherry sweets turning bitter in my mouth as I spoke. My wife looked in the bowl and then began to laugh uproariously. That isn't what I think it is, is it? I said. That's... that's a turd. So it turns out our new dog at the time had a nose for cat shit. Once my wife and mother had finished with the bowl of sweets, she'd set them to one side and it seems the dog had found this a golden opportunity to come and deposit one of her own favourite treats. Give the humans a present, so to speak. This is the last time I ever ate sweets in the dark out of a bowl. And you know what? That entire experience is still better than Dragon's Lair.